Good morning, Chicago. I'm Joni Lum in Lansing. You know there's a convention of people who make, build, and fly these things? We're going to meet them and their craft coming up. And good morning. We are with the uh, Greater Midwest Rotorcraft Association. Not the best morning for flying today, so what we're doing, what they call hangar flying, which means sitting around in the hangar telling lies. But we'll have the truth about rotorcraft coming up. Good morning and welcome back. Not the perfect morning to be flying, but we're going to talk about it anyway, imagine if you will. And not the perfect morning to be flying in something that doesn't have a roof, but heck, you have a helmet. And they tell me, these pilots tell me that, uh, you know, they walk around with knots on their head because they're always hitting things like this. <laughs> Nobody here today, though. We've got uh, some rotorcraft operators, builders with us this morning. Tom, what's your name? Tom Milton from Lansing, Illinois. Thank you for having us here. Yeah, it was a good plan here. nonetheless. <laughs> yes. Sorry about the weather. That's all right. But we're in the hangar now. And Municipal Airport here in Lansing, Illinois, and we're real happy to have a facility like this. Yeah. And a very cooperative airport manager, Mr. Bob Malkus. Uh, he helps make all this possible. And uh, we're out here today. We were getting ready for our big convention. Which, uh, we're still going to have it. <laughs> we're still going to have the convention. Yes, it's in Mentone, Indiana. And the uh, convention starts Wednesday and runs through Sunday. And the public is invited. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's at the Mentone Airport in Mentone, Indiana. And it'll be... Uh, east of here? Mentone, Indiana is about 100 miles east of here. It's near the towns of Warsaw and Rochester. All right. That's exciting. We, we also got Cy. Cy, what you I think? Cy Smith. I'm from Cedar Lake, Indiana. And you are an instructor. Yes, I teach in these things. I started teaching uh, actually this spring. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I teach mostly the people in the club here because they're all friends of mine. I, I teach just because I don't want them to get hurt. How long does it take to learn to fly one of these? Uh, the FAA says about uh, 20 hours. Um, realistically, it takes about 10. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah it depends on, on people's skill, on their ability to uh, work both hands and both feet at the same time. They're actually very easy to fly. You have to uh, use all appendages? <laughs> most of them, yeah. yeah. Most of them, yeah. Some use more than others. Tell me what it's like, since we can't take flight right now. It, it must be a great feeling, though, to be in the open air, kind of like it's, a motorcycle. To me, it's about as close to flying like a bird as anything else, because you're out in the open, there's nothing around you, uh, there's nothing blocking your view, and you fly along about 40 or 50 miles an hour, so you're wow. not being blown around too bad. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's real comfortable, it's a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's, it's about as close to you know, flying like a bird as you can. Mm. Now, most people do build their own. Oh, yeah, there are, most people buy kits now. They're pre-manufactured kits that they bolt together. Um, it takes probably 40 or 50 hours to build one. Mm -hmm. And is that the pleasure of doing this, um, putting your own work Most in? people are relatively mechanical to start with. If they weren't, they wouldn't even attempt it. They go buy uh, like a Cessna or something else and fly on that. So you've got to enjoy building stuff to start with because after you build it, after you fly it, you've got to maintain it. So you've got to keep checking it over. Every time you fly, you've got to look it over and make sure there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's an experimental aircraft, so you are the test pilot. Okay. Um, we've got some interesting craft in here. Can you point out something that we uh, especially need to take note of? Well, let's see. You caught me off guard here. Well, I manufactured a Snowbird gyroplane, so well, I'd love to Tell me all about it. Except, which one is that? Except it's across the way in the, in the hangar okay, over which there. Which one is it? So we know which color. Rain. It's got the blue seat back there, and we've just uh, purchased the company and started manufacturing okay. these aircraft. It's the one way in the back? Thing. All the way in the back with the blue. Tom, you got to do a better display, okay? Uh, I guess we'll have to advertise. <laughs> <laughs> well, have well to that's advertise. a good good try. And then that one to the right, the, the big one that kind of looks like a plane. Right, can you that explain belongs that? to uh, Cy here. Maybe he can tell you more about it. Tell us about it. So it looks a lot like a regular thing. Um, yeah, it is. It was actually, uh, it's a production model gyroplane. It was built by the McCullough Aircraft Corporation in uh, 1972. So it's actually an antique as of this is year. really? Yep. Um, they built 95 of them, and there's probably about 40 of them left in the world. <laughs> well, they look so nice sitting over in, the, in that hangar in the rain, and they just look in like the they rain, need no. to go up, don't they? Yeah. No, they're, they're also a lot of fun to fly. Uh, my daughter flies in that one with me. She loves to fly Who it. Who is she? She's six. She's standing right over there. A little pilot? Really? A little pilot, yeah. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you for bringing her. I appreciate it. Let's tell you more about the Rotocraft Annual Convention. You heard the public is invited, so let's tell you about it. It's July 23rd through the 27th, 219-353-7227, 219-353-7227. We hope to go up. Maybe the weather will clear. We're keeping our fingers crossed. WGN Morning News will continue in just a moment.
Chicago. I'm Joni Lum around town in Lansing, hanging out with the uh, Rotocraft Association. Don't know if we're going to fly, but we're ready to. Coming up. And Joni's getting a flying lesson around town. Good morning, Joni. Good morning. It stopped raining. We got the Rotocraft going. Look at it. We have right. to really scooch down like this. <laughs> what we do know is they don't take off straight like a helicopter. They need a little bit of, you know, taxiing. We'll join them a little bit later. Oh, hi, Joni. Hi. Are you ready to fly? We got people who are ready to fly. Good. It's quite a morning, I'll tell you. We had a big storm, we had lightning, but now we've got folks who are up in the sky. We've got Tom Milton and Cy Smith to tell us all about it. Tom, it's such a great day now. Yes, well, I would call it a great day, but it is better than it was a little while ago, and we were able to get a couple of aircraft up and flying for you. Tell us who's up there. Uh, that's Mike Resney. Uh -huh. He's uh, from St. John, Indiana, uh -huh. and uh, he's been flying gyroplanes now, I think, about 12 years. Having a ball. He's one of the newer members of the club. He's only been in about 12 years. Uh -huh. And, uh, yes, he has a lot of fun. He flies probably more than anyone else in the club. He does an awful lot of flying. Now, somebody told me about these, that it's not powered by the engine, the rotors, yes, that's or powered correct. by the wind? That's correct. The, uh, the auto gyro was the predecessor to the helicopter, and it was because of the gyro design like this that the helicopter came to be. The auto gyro was actually out before the helicopter, mm -hmm. and the uh, rotor is unpowered. It's turned by the action of the wind, mm -hmm. and so that if makes the it a very safe aircraft. Off, it would still go. Right, if the engine cuts off, the aircraft will still come down and fly. It's much like a helicopter will in auto rotation, but we are always in what they call auto rotation. Okay. So there's really nothing to do except lower the nose and find a place to land, and then you fly it in, land it like an airplane. Is that right? Now, what yeah. is he demonstrating for us? Is he cutting oh. the grass? He's just showing us some fun. If uh, if you look at any of the early Wright Brothers films and some of the early days of aviation, you'll find this is how they flew. And this is really what flying is all about. This is a whole lot more fun than flying around three or 4,000 feet up in the air. And uh, we, we aren't concerned with uh, uh, big tower-controlled airports. We, we're just basically flying for fun. That's why I think of you as the safety guy. <laughs> Okay. What he's doing up there, would you, I mean, do a lot of people do this? Yes, unfortunately, a lot of people do this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's part of the fun, I take it. It's part of the fun, yeah, and we're doing this a lot just for the TV right now, too, but uh, it's it's not as safe as it should be. Um, but, but you're right, it is fun. Yeah. Uh, in ultralights, they really don't have a, 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 a limit that they can come down to. An airplane, it does. Uh, and most of these are flying as ultralights out here. You know, we've got Skycam 9 up in the sky who is watching. I, I don't know what they think of all this, but they're staying pretty still while this guy goes nuts. <laughs> yeah, they're staying a long way away, too. It, uh, they're smarter <laughs> than all of us. that be a safe thing to do? Probably so, probably so. Tell me about heights and regulations and stuff like that. Um, heights, these things will go to ten or 12,000 feet if you have the patience. They're not very fast. You know, if you're at 10,000 feet and you're going 40 miles an hour, you're just kind of sitting on a lawn chair that's way up in, in the air. Chair. And not doing anything, yes. No, the original aircrafts, uh, when they were designed by Igor Benson, it was actually a, a lawn chair frame that you were sitting on. And uh, the, uh, you know, it's progressed to this. The original ones were towed. As a matter of fact, the first ones were towed by uh, submarines. They used them as spotters in World War II. The German submarines, they'd run them up on a cable and they tow them. And the spotter had to be cautious as to what he said, because if he said there's an enemy ship close by, they would cut the cable and oh, leave the guy. Yeah, you got to be careful of those rotor things. Now, I think he's going to simulate a landing for us. I or think actually, he's actually going to land here. Means we all have to move, huh? I'm getting moved over. Like, watch out, because he's going to come through here. He needs a little room to uh, land. And while he's doing that, I'm wondering if uh, Skycam 9 has some action going there. You know, we could just rip off the sides of Skycam 9 and pretend that we're doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could. They can probably fly without their doors on. So, it, uh, sure. And I don't know if he's going to land. He's going to land out on the ramp, I believe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there he goes. Smooth as right. silk. Right. And another safe landing. Any, anything that you can walk away from is safe. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Cy. That was a really wonderful demonstration. We want to tell you where you can see stuff like this. The Rotocraft Annual Convention is happening July 23rd through the 27th. Here's a phone number for more information. 219-353-7227. 219-353-7227. That was pretty awesome. That guy's pretty wild. Back to you guys. That was really neat. That was very cool. I like that. Take Thanks. a couple of those up for us, Joni. Okay. <laughs> uh, the I'll the take the off. <laughs> Skycam 9's grounded. That could be Robin's alternate form of transportation. That's right. <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, that old man, them aviators sure lead a glamorous life.